Let's look at materials and do some basic rendering using Rhino's built-in renderer. First of all, what you see in the viewport is already a rendering. It's just a very fast one. Rhino can render your viewport in several styles. These are available from the viewport drop-down menu. For demonstration purposes, you can use the full screen view to get rid of the menus. Press Escape to exit the full screen mode. You can change the settings for the full screen mode by typing hyphen full screen. Let's have a look at the sun panel. Make sure the location is correct and adjust the sun position using the time slider. Next, toggle on the skylight, the model turns white. This is because the standard material is white, you need to add proper materials. If your model is organized in layers, layers are the easiest way to apply materials. I'll change the material for the building in the context layer. Click the material field next to the layer color. Now enter a name for the material, adjust the color, and click OK. Continue with the other layers. For the floors, I will add some reflection. Floors usually take up a lot of space in the rendering, so reflections will give them a little bit of life. Glass will need to be shiny and transparent. I'll add a bit of glossiness. Go with full reflection and 95% transparency. For the stairs, I'll use a concrete material. I've added some people and a bit of furniture to give a sense of scale.
Now click the blue render button. Rendering took 1 minute and 33 seconds. For testing, we can reduce the render time by removing anti-aliasing. In the Rhino options, you can change the size of the rendering. We'll leave it at viewport. But we'll change the anti-aliasing to none. If you want, you can change the background color from a solid to a gradient. Close the Rhino options and do a new render. The rendering is a lot faster, but you will of course see pixels in high contrast areas because uh, we switched off the anti-aliasing. Let's do an interior rendering using only the sunlight and the skylight. Hide the glass layer and navigate to your desired view. This view shows both interior and exterior space. Now unhide the glass layer and click Render. The rendering finished in approximately 5 minutes. The histogram to the left shows the luminosity of the rendered image. There are no blacks. By adjusting the tone mapping, we can change the contrast. Normally, the black point is at 0 and the white point is at 1, but often brighter values exceed the value of 1. By expanding the white point, we can see the full luminosity spectrum of the rendering. Move the white point back to a more desirable white point. If you move the black point to the right, you will force the dark grey areas to be black. This will add more contrast, but it will give you a darker image that is not suitable for printing. I will change the black point back to a value of 0. Instead, you can use gamma correction to brighten the darker areas of your image. The graph shows a linear mapping from black to white. A C curve will significantly brighten the darker areas of your image, but leave the bright areas relatively untouched. Compensate by changing the black level and you'll get a slightly more contrast image than the original rendering. Save the image by clicking the floppy disk icon. Use the name view palette to control multiple camera setups.